Scott is off structure. Dr. Stone is off structure. Dr. Stone, detach. You must detach. If you don't detach, that arm's gonna carry you too far. Listen to my voice. You need to focus. I'm losing visual of you. In a few seconds, I won't be able to track you. You need to detach. I can't see you anymore. Do it now. Houston, I've lost visual of Dr. Stone. Gravity is directed by Alfonso Cuaron and it stars Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. This review contains spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie, you should probably check it out first. Gravity is a story of Ryan Stone, played by Sandra Bullock. She's an engineer on her first mission to repair the Hubble telescope. A cloud of satellite debris orbiting the Earth destroys the space shuttle Explorer, killing the entire crew except Ryan and Matt Kowalski, played by George Clooney. They have to work together to survive. After seeing this film, I spent a long time reading and watching reviews. I also read a lot of comments on the YouTube video reviews. The pattern is very clear. Some hate it, and some love it. The only common ground seems to be that it's absolutely visually breathtaking. And who can argue with that, right? If you didn't see this film in a theater, and especially in IMAX 3D, you missed a golden opportunity. It's an experience very few films deliver. Those who don't like Gravity seem to complain a lot about the script or the lack of it, and even say that the film won't work outside of a 3D screening. Many say that watching this film in 2D at home will reveal its weaknesses and confirm how bad it really is. It's nothing but a visual effects ride from start to finish and it might as well be a ride in a theme park. I've seen Gravity three times now, twice in IMAX 3D when it came out, and just now before I started writing this review. I wanted to see if in fact the film was different when viewed at home without the aid of the 3D and the spectacle that an IMAX screening provides. Not to my surprise, my opinion did not change. Gravity is an absolute masterpiece, and allow me to explain why I think that. Let's start with what most people criticize, the script. For me, this whole film is a metaphor for overcoming insurmountable obstacles, more specifically depression and personal loss of any kind. All the signs are there and easy to interpret. What people call a cheesy sob story that Ryan tells to Kowalski about her daughter that died is in fact the heart of the film and the strongest link the film establishes with the audience. That's why we're watching this film. It's not about satellite debris destroying a space shuttle and killing people. It's about human endurance. It's about how strong a person can really be when things seem hopeless. Ryan sinks so deep at one point that she decides to commit suicide. She turns off the oxygen and accepts her fate. We can hear a crying baby over the radio and the father singing a lullaby. That's when Clooney's character, Kowalski, magically reappears in the film. Ryan reacts and finds new strength in herself to keep fighting and survive. For me, that scene is incredibly layered. It represents something that many people need at some point in their lives. A wake-up call. And what's the point of going on? What's the point of living? Your kid died. Doesn't get any rougher than that. But still, it's a matter of what you do now. If you decide to go, then you gotta just get on with it. Sit back, enjoy the ride. You gotta plant both your feet on the ground and start living life. How did you get here? Finally, we see Ryan re-enter Earth and crash land on the water. She swims up after struggling not to drown and lays on the mud smiling in relief to then rise and face a new life. Also, the way the final shot is framed is no accident. The low angle showing Ryan rising up is incredibly strong and again incredibly layered. This film is speaking out to millions of people that struggle with their own personal problems every day, be it depression, personal loss, or whatever you can think of basically people who feel lost and hopeless. I think gravity is inspiring and, if only for a brief moment, it brings hope. But of course, it's not just all that that makes this film a masterpiece in my eyes. The rest is an easy sell. Alfonso Cuaron is an amazing director and this film is an achievement that very few filmmakers can brag about having in their resume. The staging and the compositions of this film are absolutely inspired and unique. The film opens with a shot that lasts over 12 minutes or so one single tracking shot that covers the setup of the film and the catalyst of the story. Just think about that for a minute. 12 minutes of seamless uncut footage. Most films have dozens of shots after 12 minutes. But who are we kidding? Gravity is not most films. 
And it's not just because of the length of the shot that I say this, it's because of the quality of the shot and how it tells the story and the way you don't even notice how the shot lasts that long. That's where the genius of Cuaron is at, and that's one of the reasons he won an Academy Award for Best Director. I think it's pointless to talk too much about the visual effects in this film. It's a technological achievement, period. Unlike many blockbusters that come out every year, this film's visual effects are flawless and always work to serve the story. What I would like to bring up, though, is the sound. The sound effects and mixing of this film are amazing and really put the cherry on top of those amazing visuals. I love how Quaron uses sound to help tell the story and how it puts us in Ryan's shoes. During the opening scene, when Ryan is detached and spinning, the camera slowly navigates inside her helmet and the sound changes to what she hears, as opposed to the radio frequency we were hearing before. Those type of details enhance the experience that is watching Gravity. There are many other examples of how the use of sound, or the absence of it, is masterful. I like how Alfonso Cuaron kind of gives a nod to Stanley Kubrick in that sense. <laughs> Sandra Bullock delivers one of the best performances of her career in this film. I don't need to say anything else about her. If you know anything about acting at all, you cannot criticize her in any way. It's beautiful to watch. Clooney is Clooney. He's extremely likable and effective, and his scenes balance the mood of the film. I love the scene I mentioned earlier, when Ryan is hallucinating and he gets inside the escape pod to have a sip of vodka. He provides a breather for the audience, a moment to relax a little bit. I can't finish this review without mentioning Stephen Price's Oscar-winning music. The score is beautiful and inspiring, and it elevates the film to even higher standards. I listen to it almost every day, especially the last three tracks of the soundtrack album. It's amongst my favorite scores, and believe me, I listen to a lot of film soundtracks. It's unforgettable stuff. I honestly don't understand all the hate Gravity gets from so many people. Yes, there are a few less inspired lines and a detail here or there that isn't that credible, but I think those details are besides the point. As I said, this is not a film about some astronauts in trouble or absolute scientific accuracy. That's just the background, the setting. This is a film about overcoming incredible odds. There is a lot more to gravity than a shallow theme park ride so many insist on calling it. See past the obvious and take a little peek behind the curtain. I'm sure you'll find a much deeper film. It'll be one hell of a ride. I'm ready. I would love to hear what you guys think about the film. Do you agree with my views? Don't be shy and speak your mind in the comments below. If you just happened to enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more movie reviews. See you next time, and don't forget to keep your feet on the ground.